So in both this and the next question, what I want you to keep in, keep in mind, keep in your head, is this a defining relationship for electric field? So this is the way I prefer to write it each time, uh, which is the electric force is given by charge times electric field. Now, even though it's the force on the left-hand side, I call this the defining equation for electric field because uh, oftentimes we come, with the, uh, come into a situation with a more familiarity for force and uh, electric field is the new quantity that we are trying to learn. So, um, so I say this is the expression that defines the electric field, not necessarily the force. Um, then someone could very reasonably ask this question, why don't I write it this way? Electric field is defined as electric force divided by the test charge because they are mathematically equivalent. Um, the reason I don't do this is because this might imply that this is more fundamental. Um, because you are making electric field a function of electric force. And in the modern view, that's backward. Electric field is the fundamental quantity, and the force is what comes from the electric field. And sometimes as a way of measuring electric field, you might measure the force and use that to infer the electric field at a given point. But even then, um, Field is what was pre-existing, and the force is what depends on the field, not the other way around. So in any case, this is the defining expression for electric field. And I really want to say the importance and usefulness of this expression can't be overstated. I see students struggling with the questions that are meant to be easy. <laughs> I think because um, people get distracted by more complicated formulas, like electric field of a point charge being a Coulomb constant times a Q divided by R squared, or um, later on this week, you will learn how to drive things like electric field of a line charge. That's gonna be two times Coulomb constant linear charge density over um, R and and so on. Um, it, I think it, it stems from the um, that um, approach towards physics that I try to teach people away from, which is the hunt for formulas. That's um, one of the least useful approach to physics. Physics being the fundamental science, you um, there's a great value in learning how to drive things from first the principles and a lot of these special case formulas, they are, they often don't apply. And um, frustrating thing that I see is that sometimes people get so over-focused on these formulas that they, they have difficulty applying these really simple fundamental relationships. So this and the next question is basically going to be that application of this one fundamental relationship to a couple different settings. So this question, it says a particle of charge, um, Q, experiences an upward force somehow of magnitude, amount of force, when it is placed at a particular point in space. So um, you have some experimental arrangement and you have this point in space where you might place a charge Q and you discover that when you place the charge there, it experiences an upward force um, over this given amount here. And from observing that force on this electric charge, what you would say is that, oh, there must be on some electric field at this location of a particular magnitude that you can calculate through this expression, electric field is a force divided by Q. I solved this for field. And, and that's exactly what question A is uh, asking you to do. It's asking what is the electric field at that point? 
Well, electric field at that point is given by this exact, uh, this simple relationship. And you can even see that the units match uh, Newton per Coulomb. Newton per Coulomb. And actually, there are other ways of writing the electric field units. Um, um, the, the, the another unit for electric field that's rather popular that you will see maybe starting next week is um, a volt per meter. Uh, so, but we haven't covered the volts yet. You will see that later. Um, but uh, right now, the units also work out. And really, all you have to do here is um, calculate the um, the force per charge. Uh, so let me just work out the number so that I can plug it in. I'll, I will make an exception and plug in numbers for this question. Uh, 5 um, times 10 to the... Uh, yeah, okay. Um, Yeah, let me, five times 10 to the power of uh, minus six uh, Newton divided by amount of charge, 1.5 times 10 to the power of minus eight, um, 333, and I'll just round it off there. 333 Newton per Coulomb, and that's basically it. And part B, when it asks if a charge um, Q of, I guess they, in this case, they are the same magnitude, but um, of opposite sign is placed there. What is the force on it? So this is why I emphasize that it's the field that's the fundamental quantity. When you start changing how much charge or what sign of charge is there, the electric field that we inferred was there won't change. Electric field here um, at this point in space, it remains at that upward uh, direction at this value. And what will change is the force according to this relationship here. Uh, I made sure to draw arrows to indicate they're both vector quantities. So when Q is negative, what will happen is that the force will point in opposite direction from electric field. And since electric field points upward, as we figured out for part A, or I guess I kind of implied it by drawing, with the A doesn't actually ask for the direction. Um, so the uh, so the force will be in downward direction, opposite from the direction of electric field, and the magnitude will remain the same as long as the magnitude of charge is the same. So um, so three hundred and thirty three newtons. Force is downward. Uh, 333 should be. Um, oh, um, I should have read the question carefully. It's asking for the force. So given the same value of the electric field, force will end up being the same as this. So this isn't right. It should be the same amount of force as that. Five times 10 to the minus six newtons. Um, I, I guess, okay, that all makes sense why I'm giving people advice for entering this answer in scientific notation. <laughs> yeah, always read the question carefully. Um, otherwise, you might make mistakes just like I did now. So, okay, that's simple enough. Um, let's look at the next question where I'm saying it's also similarly simple. So the next question says, if the electric field of some amount, some magnitude, at a distance of some distance from point charge, what is the value of Q? Oh, this question is not what I thought it was. Mm. Um, so, okay, let me answer this question uh, <laughs> the way it's actually written, and, and then I will uh, answer the version I thought it was, and why I, in the version I thought it was, it's a better illustration of um, the power of the expression, the, the defining expression for electric field, which relates the electric force to electric field this way. So... For the purpose of this question, though, um, now that I read it more carefully and know what it's saying, um, so 
So let me answer the question as it is. So what the question is saying is you have a point charge Q and you are measuring the electric field at some distance D. Uh, it could be, I guess, any point uh, at that distance. So maybe this point. And you use some method that you have of measuring electric field. And at this point, you measure electric field to be of that value. So, um, so to answer this question, um, you have to use Coulomb's law. So, so Coulomb's law. So I use the uh, word Coulomb's law to refer to two distinct versions. Uh, so, uh, so you've seen the Coulomb's law in the version that describes the force. So it's the um, there's a version of Coulomb's law that describes the electric force between two charges. That it's a Coulomb constant times product of the two charges divided by r squared times r hat for direction. So that's one version. And, um, and from this point on, I'm going to use the same phrase, Coulomb's law, to refer to the basically the same expression for this, but electric field version. So the electric field of a point charge can be described as a Coulomb constant times the charge of the point charge divided by r squared times r hat. And I also refer to this as Coulomb's law because really to go from this electric field version to the force is you just have to apply this definition of electric field. Then you go from the electric field of point charge to the electric force on a test charge. So, so to do this question, in the version it actually is not what I thought it was. Um, you just have to use Coulomb's law. So this formula is what you would use. You have electric field of a point charge at some distance. So let me call that E naught. That's equal to Coulomb constant times the, um, well, the letter Q that we are going to solve for divided by the distance squared. So the amount of charge would be um, electric field times distance squared divided by Coulomb constant. And this is one of those things that you had to look up the constant for. So let me just do this in O from alpha so that I, I don't waste any unnecessary time. Um, electric field, 91 Newton per Coulomb times the distance. I'm just going to write in all the units, uh, 43 centimeters squared. Then I'm going to let O from alpha do the unit conversion divided by Coulomb's constant. I think Wolfram Alpha knows about Coulomb's constant. Um, instead of the version involving permittivity of free space that you will start seeing soon. Um, and yeah, ampere times a second is Coulomb. So that'll give me, yeah, amount of charging Coulombs, 1.87 times 10 to the minus nine. So, um, so 1.87. So let me just uh, put in these answers, verify the answers are correct. And then I will um, <laughs> solve the version of the question that I thought this was, but it actually wasn't. The answer here is 1.87. And um, the version that I thought it was, which I now recognize it wasn't, is um, it's this version. So let me just uh, <laughs> make the modifications and um, and show you why um, the other version of the question that I thought it was would have been much quicker to answer by answer using the definition of electric field um, that's given by relating the electric force to the field by this expression. So the version of the question I thought this was that I recognize it wasn't is um, if the electric field is this at a distance of d from a point charge Q, um, and I think what I imagined the question was, what is the, um, yeah, which it doesn't make sense. So let me, uh, what is the electric force on charge, let's say, Q equals um, five times 10 to the minus six Coulomb, five microcoulomb um, 
at that location. So if that's what the question actually was, and it was asking for the force, not the amount of charge, then, then this is the kind of question that's uh, um, real easy to answer, if you remember this. But if somehow you don't <laughs> recall this uh, very useful and fundamental relationship, then it might even look like the question didn't give you enough information because it's giving you electric field and distance, and it hasn't given you the amount of charge. So if you are somehow trying to use Coulomb's law, one of the formulas that you might have memorized, then there's no way to apply this formula in such a way that you can actually calculate the force. And um, But if you remember this expression, then in recognizing that you have the electric field, you see you already have all the information you need to calculate the force on anything in one step. Um, and that's really the power of this uh, relationship here. Because, um, so this and next week, you're going to learn different ways to calculate the electric field. Or, oh, I think that's just this week. You're, so last week and this week, you are learning different ways to calculate the electric field. And really what that's showing is that there's a lot of effort that goes into calculating the electric field. And when you use this relationship, you are basically leveraging all the mathematical machinery that went into calculating the electric field some other way. And you are um, using this relationship to simply, in one step, figure out the force on a test charge. And um, and there are questions where if you just remember the simple fact, it's a super easy. But if you don't remember it, then it's super difficult. The answer for here would have been just uh, basically the amount of charge times the electric field. You don't have to use this information. It's uh, redundant once you know the electric field and you're not trying to answer the other question above. Um, and, and you don't have to know the amount of point charge. Once you know the electric field, then you have all the information you want to calculate the force on any test charge uh, at that uh, at the location where you know the electric field of.